Greetings to all. A warm welcome to all of you. My dear friends, my brothers and sisters, and all who have a hunger to more to know more about God or coming just in a curious way. Well, you're welcome. This is your Pastor Yanni. Emerged in His glory. Divine hunger. How filled you become when you are consumed with hunger and desire. For you will be completely satisfied. This is a scripture verse from Luke chapter 6, verse 21. Do you hunger for the Lord's presence? Do you long to know His heart? If so, the abundant life Jesus promised is at your fingertips. For too many believers crave everything but God, and their lifestyles make this unfortunate fact as clear as day. If that's you, repent and ask God to fill you with divine hunger. You're always welcome in the arms of God. God never intended for hunger to be difficult to attain. In fact, it is a gift from God. Ask Him and He'll gladly give it to you. Your desire along to hunger for God is proof that you have a measure of hunger that has the power to connect you to what you want and desperately need. Jesus' parabolic teaching methods would soar over the heads of the carnally minded and pierce the heart of the seeking listener. In John 6, he said, Eat my flesh and drink my blood. And they immediately assumed he was speaking about cannibalism. In John 3, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus about being born again, and he responded, How can a man enter into his mother's womb and be born a second time? Needless to say, he was a bit confused. In John 4, the Samaritan woman went to Jacob's well to draw water, and Jesus was waiting there for her. Her desire was to draw natural water to quench the thirst of her physical body. Jesus' desire was to give her a drink of eternal life that would forever eradicate her longing to search elsewhere for pleasing and satisfaction apart from God. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. But the water that I will give him will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. John 4.14 4,
the truth that Jesus was highlighting her uh, here was that her thirst to search for satisfaction in sinful places would be forever quenched when she tasted of eternal life, not her desire to experience more of God. Hunger is indispensable in the kingdom of God. When God imparts hunger into your innermost being, He's setting you up for an upgrade in the Spirit. If you're content with where you are, that's where you'll stay. You can have as much of God as you'd like. But if your heart aches to see the fullness of God manifest in your life, then you better get ready for a breakthrough of monumental proportions. Divine hunger is a catalyst that takes you from one plateau of glory to another. Jesus loves to satisfy every hunger heart with more of himself. An amazing truth about the kingdom of God is that before we were baptized into Christ, we were like an arid desert, crying out for living water. Then one drink of Jesus caused a well of living water to spring up from within us. You don't need to go here or there to drink from his everlasting stream. He planted his life within you. And you can drink freely whenever and wherever you wish by faith. Your dry days are over when this truth takes up residence within you. The kingdom of God is upside down, down from the kingdom of this world in many ways. For instance, in the kingdom of God you aren't discouraged from desiring greatness, but instead of seeking self-exaltation as the road to success, humility and service is the vehicle that takes you there. An amazing cycle occurs in the spiritual realm. God gives us hunger as a gift, and this hunger compels us to seek Him diligently, resulting in satisfaction and fulfillment. Along with this satisfaction comes more hunger, because it was just too good that you'd be crazy not to want more. Along with your fl- fresh hunger, comes an even deeper level of satisfaction and pleasure. And the cycle goes on and on. My dear ones, the Creator places longings within us which can only be answered by and in Him. He then answered the longings in part giving us just enough satisfaction to sustain us in the pursuit and leaving just enough of an H to keep us on the journey. The nature of being wood demands an ebb and a flood and a flow of desire and satisfaction. 
Hunger is our ex uh, escort into deep and lasting spiritual satisfaction. Suddenly you begin to realize that you're living far below your inheritance in Christ and a blessing in disguise called divine dissatisfaction begins to set in. A spiritual steering follows as you begin to hunger for more of God. This is a spiritual, a supernatural orchestration from God to who your heart into the deep cries out to deep. A relationship he longs to have with you. On the other side of your hunger is an encounter with his glory. It's impossible for you to hunger for God without the Holy Spirit present, imparting to you the hunger you're feeling. In fact, it's the Spirit's influence on your new creation heart that breeds hunger for the Lord in the first place. And therefore, if you feel hungry for God, it's proof that He is near and present supplying the hunger. In turn, you can rest in His nearness and enjoy intimacy with Him in your hunger. After all, Jesus is the hungry one. He is the thirsty one, and He thirsts for you undivided intention and affection. Before He breathed His last on the cross, he uttered the words, I thirst. He hungers and thirsts for you more than you ever could for him. If you hunger for God, then it's God in your producing that hunger. In that moment of hungering for more, choose to set your mind on the reality that it's him inside of you playing your art strings to tune of his love and passionate pursuit. He's drawing you in to the song of all songs, the song of divine romance with him. And let me make this point a bit clearer. Let's say the Holy Spirit decided one day that he had enough of humanity and completely withdraw himself from the earth altogether. And first of all, the earth would spontaneously combust because God even holds the world on its axis by the word of his power. But that's beside the point. Let's say all is well, but the Holy Spirit decided no more and retreats to heaven to hang out with the Father and the Son. Humanity would immediately morph into the most toxic demonic god haters who have ever graced the face of this earth. Why? Because without God's glory, we're absolutely hopeless and deprived in every sense of the word. If the glory of God departed entirely, then no hunger, longing, or acknowledgement of God would be found in the land of the living. God is the very light of mankind. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. His glory is our glory. Even unbelievers who walk in love, mercy, and kindness are excluding, I mean exuding the very nature and essence of God. They are image bearers of our triune God. They've been created in His image and likeness like the rest of us. The image is just taint and, in some cases, 
Meridian Recognition. My dear ones, before you know it, he will and desires will be melted into one with your will and desires. His will, I mean. You begin to hunger for whatever is God's best for you. Prayer, that's so important, it's meant to be personal. And thank him for all his blessings. Sing songs of love and praise because of who He is. Dig into the Word of God and discover what it says about who you are and how He sees you. Worship Him because He's worthy of all your affection. Quiet your soul and meditate on His forever enduring mercies. In the beginning of everyone's walk with the Lord, crying out to God for help, refuge, and blessings is quite common. But after you eat of Him, taste of His kindness towards you, and experience the riches of His wraparound glory, your prayer life radically shifts. Instead of always praying for things your heart cry becomes, All I want is more of you, Lord. You recognize that his nearness is more important than everything else. This world has to offer. Simply put, nothing beats Jesus. The reason so many believers can't maintain spiritual hunger is because they are feeding themselves on so many other things. Whatever you feed on, you will hunger for. If you're constantly playing video games, other games, that's what you crave. If you're spending hours of your day scrolling through social media, every time boredom strikes or a split second of awkwardness arises in a social setting, you'll run to your phone for refuge. In addition, if your mind is always thinking of sports, states, fantasy football, and to like you will constantly Gravitate toward that like is second nature. And listen, don't get me wrong. There is nothing wrong with playing video games or whatever. It's depending on the game, of course. And there is nothing, nothing wrong with spending time on your smartphone or whatever. And whatever. When well, you need to understand the message. Okay? Does the Lord cross your mind throughout the day, or only on Sunday mornings at church? There's something wrong, saints of God, if you know the stats of every sports player. You admire both, but can't quote chapter and verse of your favorite Bible scripture.
my dear ones. My prayer is that this meditation and study of emerging and abiding in God would impart holy hunger into your innermost being. I pray that you'd set yourself up for an encounter with Jesus Christ. Never neglect the secret place and continue to cultivate a lifestyle of seeking, knocking, and asking for the Lord. Because He's promised to be found and answered and give you all you're asking for. May God bless your heart, my dear ones. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.